Hi Floss Tube, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle. It is Sunday, May 17th, 2019. And I am have some things to share with you and I am going to share while the sharing is good because this week has been a roller coaster ride. So first thing I have worked on this week, I glued magnets to things and now I have needle, needle minders. I have had these two in my stash for a year. I have had these two for a couple of months. Can you see the little cameras? I don't know why getting out the glue and gluing things together makes me so nervous, but it does. And this is one of those getting out of my comfort zone things that was my goal for the year that I talked about in my January first floss tube of the year. I don't know why some of the things that intimidate me, intimidate me. And these are actually kind of a side effect of a bigger project I was gluing magnets to that was in a tutorial that was supposed to happen earlier this week, but didn't happen because of the roller coaster of life. I'm working on it and I will have it soon. Sorry for the glare out of the corner there. I'm not going to apologize that the sun is shining because all of the snow has melted and I love that the sun is shining. Next great thing from last weekend, it was the Bendy Stitchy Birthday Sal, and the first day was B. I decided that B would be for backstitching and banister, and I did the staircase in my little dollhouse. The last time I pulled out a little girl's fancy, it was like pulling teeth, but when I pulled it out on that Friday, I had fun. I had to make myself put it down because I had another project with a deadline that I'll get to in a minute. So I think I'm going to work on this tonight. I have not done any stitching or knitting or picked up anything in two days. That's not right. So Saturday was S and I did not do any stitching on Saturday. Sunday was BS. BS is beautiful scenery. This all is calm. My out of print dimensions kit that I found at the thrift store that I love. I've been talking about this and forgetting to mention the Dimension Stitch Along, which Amy at Amityville and I are hosting. So if you're stitching a Dimensions kit, it's hashtag Dimension Sal. And please join us because this is fun. These kits are hard and intimidating, but oh my gosh, they are worth it. Other reason this one qualifies as BS is I in September of 2017 was at the thrift store and somebody had donated an insane number of cross stitch kits. And I saw them and my brain did this funny thing and I was going through, I had birthday money still tucked in my purse that had been there for months and the kits were $2.25 each because it was some, somehow they had been in the thrift store long enough to be 25% off. I do not know how that happened. And I know that if Michelle had been thrifting with me that day, she would have been totally enabling me to buy all of the, the cross stitch kits. Or maybe she would have been buying some of them. Instead I have my daughter with me who was kind of radiating disapproval and I know Michelle would have enabled me. Uh, other big thing, I talked about sock madness in my last video. These are the smock madness socks. You can see all the smocking there. I should have been able to finish two socks in the two weeks that we had to get it done for the qualifying round. I'm knitting slowly. Luck has not been with me. These are not hard socks. These are reasonably complex, not crazy socks. I had forgotten, as I was losing hope, that if you finish one sock, as the pattern is written, you can be a cheerleader. So I'm not going to be on a competition team, but I will get the patterns and I can knit along with everybody else and I can still learn new things. So, yay for that. That took a lot of pressure off because with the things that are going on right now, I wasn't going to be able to compete. And I mean, under the best of circumstances, I can barely compete. 
this year it was not going to happen and apologies for being vague. The stuff that is going on right now is not my story to tell in a floss tube video. It's stuff going on with one of my loved ones. I finished the halfway home shawl. This is backwards. This is the second one. The first one I knitted and fell in love with and decided to keep for myself and instead of donating it to the prayer shawl ministry at my aunt's church I promised myself that I would knit another one and donate it instead. I love this more than I love the first one but it is getting donated because that is what I said I was going to do and that thing is so much fun to knit that I will knit a third and a fourth and I'm sure I will keep knitting it. We went to a weekend of the Bendy Stitchy birthday sale. My husband and I went to an estate sale. It was one of the bleakest estate sales I have ever been to. It just, it was the last day of the sale, the last couple of hours, and they were giving everything away. We brought home a bunch of cookbooks that mostly were my husband's choices, although I would have brought them home probably if I'd been on my own. It was just a sad estate sale. I don't know. There was this weird, sad, desperate to get the stuff out of the house vibe. And most estate sales aren't like that. Friday, we went to an estate sale closer to home. And it was one of those. It was a house that someone had lived in forever and they had kept all of their stuff and they had all of the vintage and most of their vintage wasn't well the garage we walked through and I'll show you a clip quick slideshow of the things that caught my eyes I have a steamer trunk. I have a ringer washer. I have an old vintage sled. So it was fun to look at these things, but I didn't need them. The only thing that maybe I might have needed if I had twisted my logic enough was that old school desk that is in pieces. I could have gone back on Saturday to see if it had been marked down to half price with everything else, if it was still there. And maybe we could have put it back together, but. I used restraint and I didn't. In the house, there was a framed Paula Vaughn cross stitch on the kitchen wall. There was a beautifully framed piece of cut work in an upstairs bedroom. There was another fabulous custom frame, I've never seen framing like this, of a stitched house on the staircase. So you would think there'd be stitching supplies somewhere in that house, but there weren't. The only thing that I did find, and I took it out of the packaging so we didn't have the glare, is this vintage cruel. It's popcorn and donuts, and it was a dollar, and it lives with me now because it had to. My other bit of haul for the week, if you saw one of the very recent thrift store videos, I'll link to it here, I had found some Hummel kits at... A new thrift store and I was in that neck of the woods and swung in to see if maybe it was half price day for that color it wasn't but I found this for four dollars and I will cut away and show you what the contents of this was so I could tell through the package that it was ballerinas and I think I could see the word Dega on the papers that were in there. I don't think I maybe deserve full credit for recognizing it for what it was. You can see it is ballerinas and then we've got some guys down here watching them. I did not realize when I first picked it up that it had a lot of the wool in it. That's a bonus, but the wool is not the brand that the pattern or that the little instruction label here calls for so I was debating on the drive home do I want to what am I going to do can I maybe convert this to DMC because there's always more DMC but our mystery stitcher has already stitched the corner and then one portion over here between the girls heads and I don't understand that 
And I don't think there is the color that she used there. So this should be the same color as that. I'm not working on this right now. It is a fun challenge that I look forward to at some point in the future. I do not regret investing four bucks in it. Now that I've got it out of the packaging to take the pictures, it's become quite obvious that our mystery stitcher was a smoker. But I don't have, I just have the usual aversion to somebody else's old cigarette smoke. I don't have allergies or any reason why I can't cope with that. So that was my fun, completely unexpected thrift store find. So that was a fun treat because I've been drooling over all of the huge vintage needlepoint pieces I've been seeing lately. And now I have maybe the possibility to stitch one of my own. Other big exciting thing I had yesterday I was out running for 14 hours. There was an incident at the nursing home with my grandfather. It was a day. Things are Things were better when I left last night. No one has called me, so I'm assuming things are still as better as they can be, although long-term people only live so long. I got home at 10.30 at night, and I was done. I was, I was headed to bed. I knew I wasn't going to stitch. I knew I wasn't going to watch floss tube. I was done. Looked out across my yard. All of the snow has melted. A few days ago. That's awesome. It is pitch black except for the open flames leaping up on the hillside. I can't go to bed when there are open flames leaping up on the hillside. I did send the 18-year-old out with a flashlight and I went, but I didn't go quite as far as he did to confirm that it was the neighbor's burn pile. It was on their side of the fence, which puts it like 10 feet from my side of the fence. And I don't know why people decide to light their burn piles late at night. You know they weren't watching that. And thank God for teenage boys who already plan to stay up really, really late gaming and don't mind looking out the window every now and then to make sure the flames aren't coming closer to the house. So I didn't sleep well. I woke up this morning and went on to Facebook and I saw a floss tube video notification for Joe at Joe's bleh, Joe at Joe's Country Junction. Joe is a quilter and we have been chatter it must be ten years that we've been friends online. She did a video floss tube video with her daughter. She's done quilting videos in the past, which was how she first dragged me kicking and screaming onto YouTube seven years ago. Go watch her video. It is fun. Jo is a neat lady. She loves thrifting. She is creative. She says in the video that her and her husband fixed up an old house. That is the most understatement of all understatements. She links to the house posts on her blog. Her house is amazing and was a tremendous accomplishment. What they t started with and what they have now. And I think you should go watch her. Um, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle. Thank you for watching. I have got a bunch more stuff in the works for soon, if life will just slow down enough to let me do it. I will be back with you again soon.